I bought the iPad Pro 2021 with the M1 chip with my own money. And to be frank, I'm a little disappointed. And you know what else I'm disappointed about? You not being subscribed. If this is your first time here, please hit the like button and smash that subscribe button. It would be a great help for me. I am your host, Thiru, and this is Random Review Squad. The iPad Pro 2021 with the M1 chip dropped on May 21st. And I think a few days later, it appeared on the Singapore Apple store and I bought it from the education store, right? So it's a pre-order. I've ordered it from the education store for 1.5K SGD. That is not cheap. That is a lot for a student like me. It's, it's a huge investment. And I've never had an iPad before. I've only use it for five to ten minutes my other friends iPads it is not like a full experience and I know that iPads are useful but I never really had the whole you know experience you know it's it's my first Apple product like I have been using a MacBook for work but it's not mine you see so the iPad is mine and it's my own investment I can safely say that this review is from the bottom of my heart like whatever I've seen whatever I, whatever I've done with the iPad is my own experience without any Apple hype whatsoever. I've always felt that the iPad was really unique and, and really useful to a person's life because it helps you in so many ways. It's a larger screen that's so portable and it's so versatile in terms of input and output. It's great for anyone out there and doing anything, right? Uh, you can read PDF documents on a big screen, you can watch YouTube content, you can read your news, you can take notes, you can draw your ideas out, explain your ideas on the iPad. It's it's basically a creative playground for people, content creators, architects, artists, financial advisors, everyone, anyone, students even. So it's a great tool to have. You can even call someone on the iPad, one either through FaceTime or if you buy the cellular version, which is $200, $300 more and you will look a little bit ridiculous when you hold the iPad up to your ears to talk on the phone. So I think just stick to FaceTime if you're buying iPad and stick to the Wi-Fi version. Now I did buy the base version of the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. So it comes with the liquid Retina XDR display or the mini LED display. Um, and it's the Wi-Fi version, no cellular. It's got eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. And that in itself, is enough it's amazing it's a whole new level of productivity for me on days that i don't need my laptop's computing power i can bring the ipad on days that i'm meeting people i can bring the ipad you know when we're discussing ideas when you're brainstorming i can bring it to work take down notes all these things can be done on the ipad and those are my use cases right so that's why i actually bought the ipad i can also now stop using paper and i can like shift out all the paper in my room I can declutter a lot, you know, most of whatever I have, whatever notes that I'll be taking will be going into the iPad. Maybe I'll keep like one book and like one full scale pad just in case I really need paper. Uh, but otherwise, you, I can actually declutter the room and throw out all the paper, right? Unless it's important documents, of course, then I would have to file it somewhere. So like I mentioned previously, I did buy this iPad at 1.5K from the education store. Uh, it is a huge investment for me. And there are some parts that really disappointed me. But before we get to that, let's talk a bit more about this iPad. The iPad Pro 2021 with the M1 chip a bit more. Now, the first thing that really caught my eye was the design. I know other reviewers would say that, oh, the design is the same as last year, same as the previous year. But I've never had an iPad and I've never really looked at the design because most, most of the iPads that I've used have covers, have protectors. and you don't have the proper, the full naked iPad experience. And I did for the past week before my cover and my screen protector arrived and now it's fully armored up. The design is really good. Like it's a gorgeous piece of tech. It's got a dark gray metal body. That's the main body. I got the dark gray metal one. Um, it's got a USB-C connector at the bottom. It's got three tactile buttons on the side, one power button, two volume buttons. It's got minimal bezel, like as much as you can. It's got small amount of bezel so that you don't, you know, touch it when you're holding it with your palms. 
a triple camera setup at the back, standard Apple stuff, standard iPhone stuff, and it's got a cute little engraving at the back. Um, I thought they would it would be bigger, but it's not. It's tastefully done, so it doesn't really mess with the whole aesthetic of the iPad. Oh yeah, and one more thing I forgot to mention, I got electrocuted by the iPad Pro multiple times. It's also got the same issue as the MacBook in terms of the charger not being grounded properly for some reason. Come on Apple, why are you doing this? Let's talk about the M1 chip, one of the jewels on the iPad Pro 2021. Now the M1 chip is really fast. I don't have anything to compare it to in terms of the other iPads. Um, maybe when I use it side by side, but you know, I did try it out with my friend's 2019 iPad compared it they look almost the same in terms of speed because both have a 120 hertz screen so in terms of like opening up apps storing apps and like ram management and all that it's pretty much similar maybe when you use like huger, huger larger applications like figma notion premiere pro maybe i don't know if there's premiere pro on the ipad but basically video editing software and photo editing software that is when you'll probably see the difference of the m1 chip uh, the iPad hasn't run hot for me as of yet. It's pretty efficient. Uh, it hasn't slowed down anywhere. It's really snappy. It's really fast as expected of an Apple product. The RAM management, of course, is amazing. You can keep huge apps open and you can like just jump back into it, whatever you were doing previously with ease. Like there's no shutting down of like big apps or anything. They're all stored in the RAM in the background and the management is great. And of course, battery life is pretty good as well. I actually use it like I intended to use it, taking down notes, reading news, looking at stocks, um, drawing stuff, and you know, consuming YouTube content, spending some time on the YouTube Creator Studio, and replying comments, reading emails, replying emails, and all that stuff. Basically, setting it up and all that for the whole week, and it's lasted about you know about ten to eleven hours generally. I've even FaceTimed some of my friends and it actually lasted about uh, four to five hours with the front cam on, with other apps running in the back. So that's great. It's got 128 gigs of storage and I don't need more than that because I'm already well versed in the Google Cloud and the cloud storage system. So I really know how to use my cloud to like store all my documents and make sure that I keep my devices free of documents and clutter and all that the pixel kind of trained me on that because it has minimal storage as well it's a 64 gig version and it's entirely reliant on the clouds now of course we can't go talking about the ipad without talking about the pen and the pen support the pen is amazing it's the writing feels great i think especially with the paper like screen protector it feels almost like you're writing on paper it's really smooth and they have this autocorrect feature for the curvature of the words and the letters that you draw so it looks nicer compared to what you actually write in terms of your handwriting. You can also write in text boxes and it converts all the text that you've written into proper input text so that you know you don't have to waste time typing it out on the iPad. I don't think I will ever get the magic keyboard because I'm not planning to use it like a laptop and I'll tell you why later. As far as I know the pencil is all I need. I have seen the difference in terms of writing for those of you who are thinking of getting the iPad Air or the iPad Pro, you know, you're deciding between either one. I have written on the iPad Air and I have written on the iPad Pro and there is a significant like a difference on writing on the iPad Pro, especially after you've written for like five to ten minutes. The first five or ten minutes you can't really see it, but after that you can actually see the lagginess, the slight lagginess of the iPad Air. It's still good, it still works, it's still great, it's still a great iPad, iPad Air, but the iPad Pro is... So now you'd ask, Thiru, you love the iPad so much, you've, you've enjoyed the experience for the past one week, why are you disappointed? Let me share with you some things, right? Limiting factor about the iPad Pro is the iPad OS, and I think everyone knows this, that the iPad OS is something that's not here, not there. It's, it's stuck between a tug of war of iPhone and MacBook OS. In fact, at one point when I was connecting my Google account, it actually said Mac OS when I was connecting the iPad OS um, to the Google account, which is a little bit weird, but okay. Let me give you some examples of what I mean. First thing is I can write text anywhere with the pen, even in Gmail, which is a Google app. 
But for some reason, I can't write text in a Google document. Like there's no way I can actually write on the document and it converts from input to text. It doesn't do that. It just doesn't support that. For some reason, I don't know why. Uh, that's a, the, you've allowed it in Gmail, but why not in Google Docs? It's so weird. Now I can't write on my Google Docs. I just have to type, which defeats the purpose. I'm also unable to download documents or save PDF from Google Chrome, which is a bit weird. It's like I have to go to Safari and then download it as a PDF. And also I can't create a calendar on Google Calendar. The option is just not there. If you go to settings, there's really no option for Google and Google Calendar creation. Like you can't create a Google Calendar or another calendar for your already existing Google account. Which which leads me, you know, to Google Chrome where I have to open up the app in Google Chrome and then use it there and add the calendar there, which you know kind of defeats the purpose of having the app on the iPad. I also face some issues with saving photos from FaceTime because I was spamming some of my photos on my friend and it did not get saved. Like the whole range of photos did not get saved. I did not know that you have to wait after you press once. And I don't think it should be like that. Like if it's wait, it should lock the UI, right? But the UI is not locked. You can just keep spamming the photo and you can just keep spam taking photos, but it doesn't get saved. And I thought it was a cloud issue, turned off, turned on cloud, did some troubleshooting, photos were gone. Didn't know where they are. Also swiping from left to right for some apps is really annoying. Like. You can't just go halfway, you gotta go the full way of like the iPad. It's like turning a page of a book. So you gotta go the full way. And that's a little bit weird. Like it should allow for, you know, like when you do half, it brings in the slider or brings in the page. And then when you let go of it, it just goes back. You have you have to pull the whole way across the iPad, which is a little annoying. That, but that's an issue that the iPad OS should fix. Also another one, um, this one really caught me by surprise is Apps like Lazada, Shopee, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter are not optimized for the iPad at all. Like they just give you the iPhone version of the application. And the only thing that the iPad OS does is it provides you with a button to full screen it or like expand it. And even then there's black bars on the side, which is really weird. In Lazada, they've locked the orientation to vertical because they know that if it's in portrait, like you will have the black bars. So that's really weird. Why doesn't, why isn't it optimized? Why hasn't Apple worked on apps like, major apps like Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook to make it fully optimized for the iPad OS? It feels like they are, you know, kind of giving up on it. Many people buy the iPad to consume content to, you know, view images, view things on a bigger screen. So if those apps aren't optimized, content creation apps aren't optimized on the iPad, then that's a real issue. Fundamentally, there's an issue with the iPad. I've realized more and more that the argument of putting Mac OS on the iPad is starting to make sense to me. Like it's, it's really sensible to put the Mac OS on the iPad. You want a proper OS where bugs are so minimal and it doesn't look like everything's stretched out, resolutions are not proper, you know, those kind of things that, that should be sort out, sorted out fundamentally on a device that's been around for so long. So yeah, put the Mac OS on the iPad and give it pen support. That's important. Okay, so the OS is littered with fundamental issues, but it's still a great device for content creation and content consumption, like, you know, creating notes, creating uh, drawings, editing photos, video editing, watching YouTube content, all these things are really good. And the camera is great as well. I mean, we have to talk about the camera because it's my first look into Apple's cameras. And I have a Pixel 4 XL, so I've got high expectations and I've realized that they're pretty much up to par, except for the fact that the Pixel 4 XL doesn't have an ultra wide and the iPad does. But the photos are on par and it's kind of come up to a point whereby you just have to decide which color profile and which photo you like more. It's no longer a battle of quality, it's a battle of preference. So that's really interesting to see, but I don't see myself using the cameras rather than for scanning documents. I did take some photos and took video as well to show the video stabilization because that's the big thing about the Apple cameras. Here they are.
FaceTime on the iPad is also really cool. You, the camera actually auto centers you no matter where you are so that you don't have an awkward position when you're talking on FaceTime. It's really clear it's, and it's a bigger screen so it's really like the person is there with you. So that's great as well. Now I did want to try photo editing and video editing but I, then I realized learning all the shortcuts, trying to import in videos and like from different sources and you know cutting, trimming, adding music, exporting, this is going to take a hell of a lot of time on the iPad if you're not already you know learned. So I don't think I'll be using it as a video editing tool anytime soon. Now talking about video, let's talk about the second jewel on the iPad, Liquid Retina XDR display. It's an amazing display. It's beautiful, it's colorful, it's got great you know, pixel density, the resolution is great, content looks amazing on the iPad. But there are some issues with it in terms of haloing. Like there is a lot of haloing. When the room is dark and you've got white ink over black surface, you will actually see a lot of haloing happening. Like there's light bleeding from the LED zones. And that's a little bit weird, right? It, it doesn't really sit well with me. I would have to reduce the brightness so that there's no haloing. And it gets really glaring if you're riding in the dark because of that haloing. It also feels like you have a defective product. It doesn't feel good. And the next thing that really also, you know, shocked me was the flex, the screen flex. Not a lot of content creators, not a lot of YouTubers or reviewers have talked about it. But now I'm actually properly riding on the iPad with my hand resting on it and all that. The flex is insane. Like the screen bends downwards when you are resting your palm on it and riding. And that's scary. Like I had to like readjust my whole thinking and the way I write when I write with the iPad. So the past few days have really been back and forth for me about the iPad. I fundamentally, I, I know I love the iPad. I've fallen in love with it. It's great for using you know, YouTube, it's great for reading documents, reading ebooks. I will definitely bring this to school to write notes on, bring this to work to write notes on. And it's gonna be a whole different level of productivity for me, but they should fix all the fundamental issues. I think throw the Mac OS on it. Just put the Mac OS on the iPad OS and feed pen support to it. And then maybe people would consider it to truly be a laptop replacement. I'm gonna be honest, this cannot be a laptop replacement. There's so many things that it cannot do in terms of work. And you have to find workarounds. They constantly have to find workarounds, which gets really annoying. I would rather do those things like, you know, editing Excel sheets or, you know, creating PowerPoint presentations, video editing. It's better done on the laptop or a desktop. Like the iPad just cannot beat the efficiency you get from a laptop and desktop doing those tasks. So you have to think thoroughly, you have to argue with yourself and come up with the use cases where you will use the iPad. And when you have enough use cases, then the argument is valid and you can, or you can attempt to buy an iPad. And then comes the question of whether it's iPad Air or iPad Pro. Do you really need the better display? Do you really need 120 Hertz? Do you really need the larger battery or the larger screen, um, you know, you can just settle for 11 inch iPad, maybe spend more on storage. That is entirely up to you. I am definitely, like I said before, I'm definitely not gonna get the accessories from Apple. I'm not gonna get the magic keyboard. I'm not gonna get their cover. I'm not gonna get their screen protector, whatever they have. No, I'm not gonna get that because there are cheaper alternatives for those things. Apple Pencil, of course, get from Apple. Don't go and get alternatives for that. I've gotten like a simple magnetic case to slap it on and then I've got a paper-like screen protector which is pretty decent, pretty good as well. No, overall I am a little bit disappointed that you know I can't fully utilize the iPad like a computer but I was also secretly hoping that it didn't feel like a computer and it didn't replace my computer because I already have a great laptop, I have a ThinkPad and I have the MacBook for work so it's in a right position but it still feels weird. So overall, eh. if you guys like this video, please hit the like button and smash that subscribe button. If you got any comments about the iPad Pro or the iPad line, please leave your comments down in the comment section below. Until next time, I'm your host, Tiru, and this is Random Review Squad. Pssh.